Hey everybody, welcome back. I got another package at my doorstep this time. This one is from China. As you might guess by the size of the package, this is obviously not anything from Avalon. I'm not quite nerdy enough to order loose chips and everything else that they sell is significantly larger than this. This one's actually from ASIC Miner, who are developing these wonderful little USB sticks that do, I believe, somewhere in the neighborhood of 350 mega hash per second each and run entirely off of USB power. Uh, they're a bit more expensive per gigahash, but they're actually a little bit more power efficient than the Butterfly Labs unit, which is impressive considering that these are 130 nanometer ASICs, while Butterfly Labs are 65. So let's pop open the package and see what we've got. So now I'm pretty sure this isn't retail packaging because I don't believe they actually have retail packaging. Uh, at the moment, unless you're getting demo units like I am, you have to order, I believe, 50 of these at a time in order for them to even bother shipping anything to you. And at that point, you are solidly in OEM territory, so plain white box, not surprising. Uh, I will say, though, shipping was surprisingly fast. I got this, uh, I think, about three days from China via DHL. Um, but I don't actually know how fast they shipped it. Let's see what we got. Alright, more white boxes inside the white box. There's two here. I'm assuming that means they sent me two demo units. And sealed with little QC stickers. Good to know you're doing your quality checking out there in China, guys. Thank you. And here is probably what's going to actually be the retail packaging. Kind of, um, if you've ever bought an iPod Nano, it's, it's kind of similar to that. It's just a little clear plastic case with a, looks to be a foam inset. So I got a black one there. Let's see if they sent me two different colors. And a red. It's, it's like they read my mind. These are my colors. So there's the red one. So here's the packaging. Um, just a simple little clear like casket style case, um, little foam inset there. Foam backing. Um, so the, the foam is cut all the way through and you can see, if I pop it out here, that on the one side it's uh, got some kind of, feels like aluminum maybe, like a heat spreader. Uh, with a nice little Bitcoin logo in it, and the other side is bare circuit board. So I'm not sure how I feel about that particular element of the design, but it's going to make my job a lot easier in the teardown video since I don't think there's actually anything here to tear down. Uh, so let's go grab a laptop and see if we can get this thing mining. Alright, so I've got my laptop and everything set up. I've got uh, the BFG miner command that I'm going to run all queued up and everything. Um, I went ahead and double checked beforehand this time, and it appears that my USB drivers are all set up and everything, figured out the options that I need. So we're going to go ahead and plug in the black one. Um, one thing that I found a little bit odd is that when you plug it in, despite the fact that they've gone to all this trouble to make this really pretty sort of heat spreader that looks very slick and professional, that side actually goes down when you plug it in. Uh, because there's an LED on this side of the board that indicates whether it's got power, it's been identified, and whether it's mining or not, which I'll show you in just a minute here. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and plug this in. And little blinking green LED indicates that it's still identifying. Solid green LED indicates that it has identified. And I'm going to go ahead and hit enter in a second here, and we'll see it mine. Alright, so we've got it plugged in and BFG Miner is all queued up and I want you to all take note of the little green LED there which is on solid when the device is sitting idle and as soon as I start up BFG Miner, the light will go out and will just flash periodically to inform me that it's still mining and should for some reason BFG Miner stop, 
then in just a few seconds here a little green light will come right back on to inform us that it is currently not mining there we go all right so it's mining I'm gonna go ahead and leave this for several minutes just to see what the numbers even out to over a reasonable period of time and we will come right back with some results all right so I let it mine for a little bit and it seems to be running at the advertised 333 mega hash per second rate there is one interesting feature that I accidentally discovered, however, when I went to unplug the unit. You should probably let it cool down for a couple of minutes before unplugging it because I... Well, I didn't quite burn myself, I don't think it was that hot, but it was hot enough to be uncomfortable, to cause a little bit of pain, and uh, I've plugged it into an extension cable, it's running right now, and I've got a uh, thermometer here. That is putting it at 136.5 degrees Fahrenheit. So, yeah, I mean, it's not it's not burn you hot, but it is interior of your car on an extremely hot summer day hot. It will startle the living daylights out of you if you just try to grab it and yank it out. Um, especially this little aluminum heat spreader here on the back. I mean, this side is 136 degrees, and the PCB side is only 125 so very careful when you take this thing out I mean it is a minor it's supposed to just kinda of be plugged in and forgotten about but um, yeah if you go to do any maintenance be careful for the sake of fairness and thoroughness I plugged in the red miner and moved it to the other side of the table so that it wouldn't be interfered with by my computer's exhaust at all and uh, it does seem to run a little bit cooler about 120 degrees according to my infrared thermometer which is a good 15 degrees Fahrenheit cooler than the black one ran uh, possibly environmental since I had it away from the only other source of heat in this room uh, but it is still extremely warm to the touch not not quite as, as shockingly burningly hot as the other one there is always a little bit of variance in Heat, produc heat production and power consumption from one ASIC to another, uh, but it is, I guess, important to note and a, a very good thing they gave me too to test with, uh, that the variation in heat production in these particular units is enough to potentially hurt you, so be very careful. So, heat problems, potential trips to the burn unit aside, what's the final verdict on these guys? Well, I mean, relative to a lot of the other ASIC products out there, they are pretty expensive per gigahash. Uh, these guys only churn out about 330 megahash per second, and they cost somewhere in the neighborhood of $300 if you can even find them. Because they're so rare, uh, you'll often find these guys on eBay for four or $500 a piece. Uh, which is pretty pricey for 330 mega hash. To put that in comparison, uh, an ATI Radeon HD 5850 puts out about the same number of mega hashes as these little guys and costs around $100. So why would anyone want to get these? Well, that same Radeon 5850 is going to consume, at current local rates, about $20 worth of electricity per month to produce about $35 worth of Bitcoin. Well, this guy only produces that same $35 worth of Bitcoin, he'll do it for 20 cents. So, it might take longer to break even on your hardware, but you're going to have a much higher markup to do so. Uh, you're going to be profitable for a lot longer. That, in addition to the fact that these guys are just kind of sexy. I mean, they're very cool looking, they're really small. Uh, this is what I imagined when people first started talking about ASIC mining products, is tiny, sleek little USB plug-and-play sticks. Uh, now, I also unfortunately didn't imagine that actually mining with them was going to require me to open the Windows command line or Linux command line and execute some uh, a piece of software with 15 command line options. That part needs to get a lot easier for ASIC to make its way into the mainstream. Uh, GUI Miner would be a great step in the right direction, but even that might be a little complex for, you know, grandma and grandpa to mine with. 
so I think the software is going to have a little bit of a challenge catching up with these guys, but I could see this being a really, really great solution for the let's get everyone into mining push, that we really need to have a distributed security solution for our infrastructure. Uh, where not everyone necessarily can afford a 50 or 60 giga hash rig, pretty much everyone who's been involved in Bitcoin could afford one of these, especially once we get the, the distribution nailed down so that the crazy, scammy $500 eBay pricing goes away. Uh, this is a potential solution to a very real problem. This I see as distributing the hash power where Previously, the hash power would have all gone into one big lump. Uh, for now, though, you're not going to make a lot of money mining with these unless you plug in 30 or 40 of them at a time, um, in which case, I suppose at least you're better off than plugging in 30 or 40 video cards at a time. Your house wiring may actually be able to keep up with these. Thanks for watching everybody, and if you liked this particular video, please feel free to donate to the Bitcoin address in this QR code right here. Every video has its own unique QR code, so in addition to your donations making it possible for me to keep doing what I do, this particular donation will also let me know what it is that you liked. So if you want to see more of this kind of content, vote with your wallet. Thanks.